This week on The Cinemas, Edge of Tomorrow, Fault in Our Stars, and Maleficent. A Bahamian and Caribbean classic returns to theaters, and I'm joined by Cinemas regular Leslie Tynes to discuss for the final time the HBO Game of Thrones short film competition. Most people who know me know one concrete thing about me. I like movies. A lot. So yeah, my parents gave me the name of a movie star since before I was even born. But truth be known, before I even knew who John Travolta was, I wanted to work in movies. There was a time in film history when a group of French filmmakers, critics, and writers got together and created what was called Cagier du Cinema. It was a magazine that essentially bridged the gap between the filmmaker and the movie-going audience. With smartphones, everybody today is either a filmmaker or a critic. And that is this show. This online community. This is The Cinemas. So Hollywood has given us a pleasant surprise in this action-packed summer movie. That movie is Edge of Tomorrow. It may not be the smartest title, but don't be dismayed because this is probably the summer's smartest movie. Edge of Tomorrow unfolds in a near future in which an alien race has hit the Earth in an unrelenting assault unbeatable by any military unit in the world. Major William Cage, played by Tom Cruise, is an officer who has never seen a day of combat when he is suddenly dropped into what amounts to be a suicide mission. Killed within minutes, Cage now finds himself thrown into a time loop, forcing him to live out the same brutal combat over and over, fighting and dying again and again. So that's as much of the plot that I'll reveal. But I do want to acknowledge Edge of Tomorrow's most valuable players. They are its screenwriting team of Christopher McQuarrie, Jez and John Henry Butterworth. It's director Doug Lyman, whose vision of their screenplay is wonderfully executed. A radiant Emily Blunt is very strong here. And then there's Tom Cruise. Mr. Cruise, who now at age 51 and some 25 years making movies, has to be the greatest movie star that Hollywood has ever produced. Edge of Tomorrow is one of the best movies of the summer and maybe the year. The Fault in Our Stars based upon the number one best-selling novel by John Green, explores the funny, thrilling, and tragic business of being alive and in love. Hazel and Gus are two extraordinary teenagers who share a wit, a disdain for the conventional, and a love that sweeps them and us on an unforgettable journey. Their relationship is even all the more incredible given that they actually met and fell in love at a cancer support group. Fault in Our Stars is quite a romance. It's also quite a weeper. Or as I would tell my friends, it's quite the snot fest. But it does allow these two young actors, these two young stars rather, to shine. They are Ansel Elgort and the ever promising Shailene Woodley. Whether or not you're a fan of the book, Fault in Our Stars delivers. Lastly is Maleficent. Maleficent at this present moment has been declared the number one movie in the world. So by now, most of you know what it is. It's a spin on the Sleeping Beauty tale, exploring the untold story of Sleeping Beauty's villain, Maleficent. In this tale, we learn who Maleficent is, where she came from, and what turned her into one of Disney's most treacherous villains. This movie should have not been able to work, particularly for those of us that like the Sleeping Beauty tale as is. But it does work, and it works because of Angelina Jolie's enchanting performance. With Maleficent, she actually gives us an anti-hero that we want to follow and root for, and that's quite a remarkable achievement. Got some feedback from our last show. At Kellen Lutz writes that uh, the show keeps getting better and better. This Khan episode is epic. And I got some feedback from Mr. Citizen's Review himself, Mr. Aaron Ferguson. He writes that uh, he felt like he actually went to Khan through this episode. Send us your Facebook feedback, send us your tweets, send us your Instagrams. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, just for you. 
So, X-Men Days of Future Past is the number one movie in the country and the Caribbean, and Maleficent is number two. We've talked about those movies already. So, what we're doing now with this segment, brought to you by Coke, is uh, we're continuing the conversation that we've started some months ago about our Caribbean movie showcase. I'm happy to say that Rain, which debuted in 2008, is coming to Galleria Cinemas. And I'm personally excited because, in my humble opinion, Rain is the, and I might get in trouble for saying this, Maria, <laughs> but uh, Rain is the best film, the best Bahamian movie produced by a Bahamian filmmaker, and the greatest Bahamian film, I think, period. I think. I think every film that came out after Rain really sort of trails Rain and really has a bit of a debt to pay to Rain. The movie got rave reviews around the world. It opened at the Toronto International Film Festival. And joining me here to discuss it today is its filmmaker, Maria Govan, <laughs> and executive producer, Mr. Chris Monoma. All right, thank you. So let's talk about Rain. Maria. Um, X-Men, Maleficent, you know, these are big Hollywood movies. They open, they pull in huge amounts of cash. Caribbean and Bahamian movies haven't done that well locally. What needs to happen now that we're putting rain back in theaters? What needs to happen for our local audience to understand the importance of supporting our local product? Um, I think, you know, marketing is is a tricky thing. I mean, as an independent filmmaker, I think, you know, the expectation is that you do everything in this particular time in, in our marketplace. You write the film, you raise the money, you make the film, you produce the film, you finish the film, and after what is probably three years of your life of, like, really intense work, right. you're then expected to market and often distribute your own work, and I think it, it can be a little trying after such a long haul, but I do think it's, it's the onus in large part is on the filmmaker to actually market to the greater public, and in fact, I mean, for myself, I can say with Rain, we were not as, you know, we, we could have done better with, with our own, like, local marketing. And so I'm really excited to have an opportunity to put it back into the theater. And I think it's important for us to really start to take this industry. Right. Um, obviously, you know, Maria, yourself, Kareem, the, the Bahamians who are now taking this industry and really making a, a full-throated push into this industry and I think it's absolutely important for us to now to start to tell our stories. Um, people are, throughout the world want to want to hear what's happening down there, what's the vision in the minds of right. local filmmakers there and I think from, from a directorial standpoint, from a production standpoint, I think we have the talent and the abilities to deliver big, you know, big blockbusters as well. We just need the resources, one, within the country to get it done, and two, the opportunity to, to, to make that big stand, because at the end of the day, it could be a, a Bahamian director right. on the, you know, directing Tom Cruise on the Why, picture, why no. shouldn't it be? I, 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 that's, that's what I want to say. <laughs> exactly. I remember saying to Maria when I first saw Rain in 2008, because uh, you were going on about how it's our story, and I said to Maria, I don't know I mean, Maria tapped into the most Bahamian of Bahamian <laughs> nests. I mean, that story personally happened in my family. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had a cousin who lived with my grandmother, and her mother was on drugs in Nassau. Mm -hmm. No kidding, my family can attest to it. I want to say her name, I don't want to embarrass her, but she left Nassau, I mean, she left Bimini, mm -hmm. came to Nassau to look for her drug to, to look for her mother, which is essentially the story of, of Rain. I, I basically taught myself how to make films by making documentaries. I didn't right. go to film school. I bought a camera and I sort of shot, edited, you know, did all of it myself, which right. was a great sort of film school, and it was free. I mean, ish. Right. But um, so I had done a film on HIV and AIDS where we, I spent four years um, in a community of crack addict. You know, it was a crack house basically. Um, and, you know, really saw how many women in particular were struggling with this demon on their back, crack cocaine, while trying to be mothers and ha having children out there in the wow. world. And it was this constant, and I, and I mean, it was a really painful thing to see because these are people that really love their children. Right. But as I said, couldn't get this sort of devil off their back. So, you know, I've heard that Rain has struggled over the years to find its audience, to find its niche. The truth of the matter is, the audience for Rain is right here in the Bahamas. It's the Bahamian audience. You all need to come out 
all of you, we want to create a movement around rain. <laughs> Hashtag rain. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, see? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we want all of you guys to uh, support this movie. It's going to be here at Gallery of Cinemas for the month of June. Um, and so we're encouraging all of you to come out. Dining in a Movie This Week is brought to you by Mojo's on West Bay Street. Mojo's, where the magic is in the field. Leslie, Les Boogie, Times. Welcome back. Travolta, thank you so much. You're like a cast member of the show, you know that. I personally consider myself your absolute favorite guest co-host I... show, whether you see <clears> it or not. I can't say that on camera, but yeah, that's kind of true. <laughs> that's what I <laughs> myself. Thank you, though. I'm so happy to be here. What's this? You are having a Ginger Rogers, and I am enjoying myself a seal ball. Awesome. Cheers to that. Cheers. Guys. It's good Thank to see you guys you. again. I'm happy to be here. Good, good, good. good. How are the drinks? Oh, these drinks are amazing. Yeah? Yes. That's good. Are. We work pretty hard on them. Um, Food-wise, you guys have anything in mind? If I could suggest something, I... I'd, Please do. Recommend something. I would suggest our Kobe beef burger. That is the best burger in Nassau, without a doubt. Is it now? It, it really is. Best burger wow. in Nassau. In Nassau. And what makes it the best burger? Burger in Nassau. Well, first of all, we start with the Kobe beef. There is no beef like Kobe beef, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't know what Kobe beef is, you should look it up. The, the cow has a particular diet. They get massaged on a regular basis. Oh, the marbling okay. in the patty is exquisite. So we're here again at Mojo's. For those of you who have been following the show, this is our third show and last at Mojo's. Mojo's has become a part of uh, HBO's Game of Thrones short film competition. They're helping Cable Bahamas and our show promote it. And they're, they've been our hosts for the last two shows. Mojo's is also having something very, very exciting this Sunday. They're going to be having a beach tavern. We're inviting everybody to come out. Whether you're involved in the competition or not, it's going to be out of this world. We're all going to be on the beach. Uh, you know, a beach bonfire. And uh, we're probably going to be, you know, drinking beer and singing Kumbaya. Actually, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but um, you're welcome to dress in a medieval style costume and get into the whole Game of Thrones groove. And guess why Leslie is here? Leslie is here today because I discovered Leslie, who I know to be the Game of Thrones fan of all Game of Thrones fans. Oh. <laughs> Leslie's just entering the competition or just about to. And I'm thinking, why, Leslie? Why am I so crazy? Why? <laughs> so, why am I entering the competition or why am I waiting until the last minute to enter Both. the competition? <laughs> well, it's an amazing opportunity, <laughs> first of all. And uh, as for the last minute, that is just entirely based on all the preparation that is involved. Now, I can't speak for anyone else, but I would hope that everyone has done their homework because for me it was about choosing a scene it's of course based on someone reenacting right. a scene from season four right. so even if you're somebody that's watched all of this entire season right. you want to make sure that you choose the right scene it's right. got to fit you you've got to feel it you Absolutely. know what i mean yes. so you've got to go back through your archives you've got to pick that <laughs> right moment that right episode that right scene and you right. just got to get it right there are surprises going to happen at Galleria Cinemas at the finale June 15th. Things I haven't even told you guys yet, so this is definitely an opportunity you want to seize. So hey guys, there's still time. The deadline is June 8th, as you know. By the time you've seen this, you might have had two days, but hey, I've made short films in a day. So I think if you really put your mind to it, you could do it. You definitely don't want to miss this opportunity. It's a wonderful opportunity you're being afforded, so uh, here's hoping we see you at the finale. Here's a toast to Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Listen to the guitar, give that soul some tune. Thank you for watching The Cinemas. Feel free to subscribe to our channel.